To discuss this and other issues, I'm joined by former senior advisor to President Clinton and former president of Equality Matters, Richard Socorides. Welcome back. Uh, uh, host of HuffPost Live, Mike Sachs. Welcome for the first time. And comedian Jeff Chrysler, author of the book Get Rich Cheating. Uh, let us begin with this legal brief. Uh, Richard, you wrote about this today for The New Yorker. Am I being a little bit cynical about the signer's intentions? Well, I think you are being a little cynical, and I think that it, you know, it's a very good thing. I mean, there's a lot of movement towards this. We're working, the, the case is going to get argued before the Supreme Court uh, at the end of March, um, and this brief, I think, is important. I mean, everybody, I think, is entitled to their journey on same-sex marriage. And Meg Whitman, who flipped today officially, um, I think it's a good thing. I think we ought to let, let people change their mind. So we don't need to hear anyone say, I was wrong to support a law banning tax-paying citizens from marrying who they want in a free country. It's just good enough. Well, I think by signing this brief, she's saying she was wrong, well, uh, impliedly. Gentlemen, we agree. Excuse me, my first time. <laughs> it wasn't too long ago that President Obama had to say he was evolving towards same-sex marriage. And if you remember when he did finally evolve toward same-sex marriage, which I think he probably held in the first place, but mm -hmm. said it for political reasons anyway, that he ended up saying, okay, he's against DOMA, but he thinks states should go state by state. Now, this brief is to take down the, the Californians' plebiscite to erect a barrier against same-sex marriage. And these the Republicans who sent the brief today say, well, that should go down. You know, that could I'd perhaps move President Obama to say as well, okay, if the Republicans are getting out ahead of me on this one. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's then how it should we'll be. Should, it should be a, a step by step, a joint move. He leads a little, they lead a little, one step forward, keep going. I'm actually impressed, even though I, I of course, question the motives, thinks it's selfish and political. The rate of change on this issue compared to almost every other civil rights issue I can think of is incredible. I mean, I don't yes. have the numbers, but what is it? Ten years ago, it was like 20, 30 percent at best were pro-marriage equality. Exactly. And now it's And, it's and while a majority. I agree that, yeah, political expediency is the mother of decency sometimes, uh, I, <laughs> I do agree that any progress is positive. And it's true. When I first moved to Greenwich Village at the height of the AIDS crisis, I never would have imagined that because of this plague, a, a community would organize and show the world the fastest gain in human rights and civil rights that we've ever seen in history. So I, I don't see how it can't be a, a positive. But last week, John Huntsman came out in support of marriage equality in the American Conservative. Uh, Ambassador Huntsman said, quote, the American people will not hear us out if we stand against their friends, family, and individual liberty. So it doesn't really matter if it's being done for political reasons or if it's just a good sign that they feel they have to do it. Right. I, I think that you could really make the, 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 the call that this is the conservative point of view. And Ron Paul has done this. Allowing Americans to marry who they want is the essence of conservatism. Well, and in fact, Ken Melman, uh, the former RNC chair and the former head of the uh, Bush 04 re-election campaign, was the person who organized this brief, this brief that is getting filed in the Supreme Court. And he is the one who has long said that uh, marriage equality is a conservative principle. And I, uh, but I think you're right also that those conservatives, those so-called conservatives, who for a long time have said, have been on the other side of this, are now in w on this issue where public opinion is changing so fast, are in a tough spot because if the Republican Party wants to go into the future, people like Chris Christie, mm -hmm. who vetoed a same-sex marriage bill in New Jersey, are going to be in a tough spot. Indeed. Although I would say, I I'm sorry to disagree, Richard, but Ken Melman, he owes a lot of people an apology right. because he's the guy who used fear of a gay married planet to club John Kerry in 2004. I think yeah. there's a bit of a Tony. But the tea, I, I, I think they're I totally the tea leaves. And I mean, sorry to do the Tea Party analogy, yeah. but there, there's things, tide is turning. And we see they maybe their conservative principles are for gay marriage, but we've seen, especially with Obama, their principles don't matter if it's political expediency that they can gain. I mean, uh, Obamacare is a Republican idea, but they hate it because exactly, it was his. Exactly, because it has his name on it. Right. And, and that, once and that becomes popular, it's going to be a Republican idea again. Well, exactly. In 20 years, Mitt Romney will be bragging that he fought for this all along. Exactly. But most of these politicians are already out of office, people like David Stockman or John Huntsman. But the National Organization for Marriage is saying that they will defeat any Republican candidates who support marriage equality in America. Um, is it still too risky to support marriage equality in this country if you're a Republican? Those who are thinking on the short term, yes. Those who are playing the long game, no. Exactly. Right. Right. It's like saying, oh, remember that guy? He was against child labor. Exactly. Like eventually the tide's going <laughs> to turn. You know? And the tide's turning now. It yeah, really and is. it does seem like along with immigration, the Obama uh, administration has found the great wedge issue. What was really a turning point, right, was uh, l the last election cycle where four states, Maine, Minnesota, Washington State, and Maryland, all voted 
for marriage equality. It was the first time marriage equality was on the ballot. And an openly gay senator and was elected. Gay senator and, Tammy yep. Baldwin, sure. and it's going to pass in California, too. Uh, shifting gears to another area of Republicans fighting with one another. Chuck Hagel was finally confirmed today as Secretary of Defense in a somewhat narrow 5841 vote. So did the delay serve any purpose <laughs> other than helping Lindsey Graham maybe not get primaried? <laughs> no, it served no purpose whatsoever. I no. mean, anything? Now that he's confirmed, people are going to forget about all this hubbub that went around it. He's going to go about his daily business, and no one will really be thinking yeah. about his views on Iran or Israel. I'm mm -hmm. not completely sure it made no difference. I mean, I think that um, it will long term, you know, he'll, he'll serve, and hopefully he serves well, and I think the president, you know, is optimistic about it. But I think that, um, you know, th this will be remembered as the first in a long time, certainly if not the first ever, uh, uh, defense nominee who ran into these kinds of problems. And I think the Republicans really let it be known that this guy is not going to get an easy time of it. It was the closest vote um, yeah. that's ever happened. I mean, I, my theory is that they delayed it so that he could be blamed for the sequester cuts, but that's <laughs> my fantasy. Well, world. but beyond John McCain unfriending him on Facebook, I mean, <laughs> is there going to be any lasting impact from this rancor and, and bitterness we've seen for the past month? If there's anything, perhaps they made a breakthrough towards further filibusters of more important, well, I guess we can be more important than Secretary of, Secretary of Defense, maybe mm -hmm. another Supreme Court justice. And I can see a filibuster of the Supreme Court justice if this raging against the dying of the right does not. But didn't end. they? But didn't they damage their ability to do that? Because at a certain point, there's a fatigue setting, and even the rabid supporters of the the Tea Party and the Lindsey Grahams, uh, you keep filibustering everybody and everything. Eventually, they're going to crack. Yeah. To say nothing yeah. of the amount of times they had to scream Benghazi at a man who had nothing to do with Benghazi. <laughs> so whether or not it'll hurt their capital in the long run, we'll find out. We're Although he the... certainly didn't do himself any favors, right, with that oh. testimony. I mean, it yeah. was really. I haven't seen a performance like that since Obama's first debate. Um, we're <laughs> <laughs> take a break, and then my panel and I will see whether Glenn Beck is pulling an Andy Kaufman. Don't go away. I hate to bring bad news, but Glenn Beck is still having a hard time getting along with people outside his bubble. And now he's even picking a real fight with people who fake fight for a living. Uh, Glenn's complaint is that World Wrestling Entertainment has a couple of anti-immigration Tea Party characters as villains. Zeb Coulter and Jack Swagger pitted against the popular Mexican-American heavyweight champion, Alberto Del Rio. Boy, doesn't this make you sad Glenn's not on TV anymore? So, 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 so Beck uh, referred to the WWE as stupid wrestling people. And can I tell you something, friends? Wrestlers generally don't like being called stupid, and neither does their audience, especially when it overlaps with The Blaze. The actors playing our xenophobic bad guys even dropped character, called him stupid back, and made this offer. Mr. Beck, we cordially invite you to Monday Night Raw in Dallas at the American Airlines Center. This Monday, where you can deliver a five-minute, unedited rebuttal to our global TV audience and a sold-out crowd of 12,000 stupid wrestling fans. This may shock you, but Beck quietly declined that invitation as he declines all invitations to step outside his comfort zone. So let's bring it back to my panel, Richard Socorides, Mike Sachs, and Jeff Chrysler. Uh, I, now, it may seem like a trivial story, but I do think that Glenn Beck, who is a very powerful media figure and has continued to thrive since leaving Fox News, him insulting pro wrestling fans is a bit, to me, like the CEO of Whole Foods attacking liberals, right? Isn't he alienating his own customers? Well, I've got to rebut the idea that pro wrestling fans are stupid. In fact, I'm wearing my WWE, then WWF, uh, cufflinks of the, the uh, tag team group Demolition from the 1980s. Wow. And I was the co-founder and co-president of my high school's professional wrestling appreciation society. So wow. that all said, <laughs> well, someone, I, someone I, I won't upset you. I wouldn't want to get fake beaten up. <laughs> someone you don't want to pick a fight with is a pro wrestler because they can out-talk you, they can out-demagogue you, and they can out-arena you. <laughs> or in this case, they can out-fake outrage you. I mean, I think Glenn Beck is, uh, you said it yourself in the break, like an Andy Kaufman. Like maybe he's trying to become the supervillain. I mean, it's a way he's attacking the big figure that all his fans are trying to poke it and try to have that bear attack him. I wouldn't be surprised if one of these days he actually does show up but at Richard, a wrestling event. I mean, well, it, looks I like, it looks a little like a publici publicity stunt, right? Yeah. I mean, it looks like some of this is, is, is slightly contrived. And well, I it's think, good for know, WWE, we the, but I, I don't think it is for Glenn Beck. I, I can't really understand how this does not hurt him. And again, this is a guy who was on the cover of Time magazine picking a fight with <laughs> pro wrestling fans. There is a bit of overlap. That, I mean, that, a lot of that is his potential audience I in like, terms of rural Americans. I like to think his best days are over, though. I really do. I 
think he's on the way on the way down. Well, what do you think about the fact that the World Wrestling Entertainment made the Tea Party guys into villains for popular entertainment in America? It says that Linda McMahon is a better businesswoman than a politician. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she, well, that's for sure. Well, I mean, she sees again the, the tea leaves. I mean, the writing's on the wall, and the tide is turning against them. And they're look. I was also a fan in the '80s. It's where I learned about geopolitics with the Iron Sheik. It's where I learned about <laughs> race relations with Junkyard Dog. I mean, exactly. They have never shied away from exploiting a stereotype because, like any TV and entertainment, it makes good drama to, to take a stereotype and exploit it. But and the stereotypes violence. here are white males, right? right? And they're playing up against the Tea Party because there's an ascendant audience of, of Latinos, Hispanics in the United mm -hmm. States exactly. and abroad who are mm -hmm. really starting to follow WWE. Exactly right. And they pointed that out, uh, the two gentlemen mm -hmm. in that video, that they have a large Latino fan base. So who knows, pro wrestling may lead us in the fight for diversity. <laughs> yes. Now, <laughs> believe it or not, there, and who could forget <laughs> the inspiring 80s uh, UN summit with Coco Beware. Now, uh, <laughs> there is another story today about GOP infighting. Chris Christie, who currently has a 55% approval rating nationwide, has not yet been invited to speak at this year's CPAC for the crime of being electable. Does this show more division in the GOP and is it a sign of what's to come in the 2016 GOP primary? Richard? I, I mean I think Chris Christie is probably liking the fact that he was not invited because I think Republicans generally are, tr are, are trying to seem a little bit more moderate uh, and you know it's hard for them to do. Chris Christie is not really a moderate politician but he but he governs in a moderate state, exactly. in, a, in a blue leaning state. And so anybody, any conservatives who say they don't want anything to do with him, I think you know he's probably loving it. It seems mm -hmm. like they're almost paving the road for him to repeat a, a Clinton-esque third-way triangulation to, to shun the extremism in his party. I mean, I don't know if he can do it because he's still mm -hmm. got to get through the primary, but it seems like they're opening that door for him if he wants to plow through. I agree. I think we're going to see Chris Christie and Jeb Bush both competing to be the electable moderate and that uh, he's probably is most likely very happy, as right. you say, to be not But the, the real question, of course, is like, you know, you can do that in a party that isn't, in the first place, really made up of extremists. I mean, right. they may be trying to do this, but they may end up without an audience for it. I think what will be key for, for him and for Jeb Bush will be 2016, is if the extreme right completely collapses, after 2016, I'm sorry, after 2014, 2014 exactly. right, that's what I'm after, mm -hmm. the congressional, if, that, if they get wiped out again, they're going to have no choice but to go moderate. I don't see that happening. Say what you like about the extreme right, they are more organized than anyone, and sure. they turn out for midterm elections. Will I am isn't writing any catchy jingles about show up for the midterm kids. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I look at, I think that's totally, I think you're absolutely right, and I think, you know, the Republican Party, remember, nominated Barry Goldwater for president right. one year, and it mm -hmm. wasn't like people thought Goldwater was going to win, you know, they just did it because they thought it was the right thing to do. And nowadays, he'd be called a lefty. Now, uh, let's move to another great political leader, Dennis Rodman. <laughs> He's on a peace mission to North Korea. The former NBA star who once promoted his book by wearing a wedding dress is going to the uber-repressive country along with three Harlem Globetrotters to play a little basketball. Uh, one North Korean resident saw a picture of Rodman and said he looks like a monster. This from people who wept when Kim Jong-il died. Um, I think this is great, but what do you guys think North Korea is going to make of Dennis Rodman as U.S. goodwill ambassador? I think Kim Jong-un, when he was in boarding school in Switzerland, was known to be a big Michael Jordan fan and wore his Air Jordans around, at least from anonymous reports <laughs> of roommates. So maybe he's just trying to pick up the dregs of what remains of the, of the 1990s bulls. Well, this is what happens, yeah, and this is what happens after a, a nuclear test. He's like the Godzilla monster that comes out of the water. <laughs> I actually, oh, I'm, you I'm can't. how do you expect anybody to compete with that? That's <laughs> like, I mean, uh, well, that, 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 that's an insult to Godzilla. Well, here, here will be my more serious political point is that it, it, it's in a weird way feeding what the North Koreans are trying to do because the whole bread and circuses idea of the Roman Empire, mm -hmm. they can't give their people bread, so let's promote sports, let's promote circuses. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it's bad. I commend him. He's the original Meta World Peace. He's like Meta Meta World Peace. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't know that it actually doesn't play into the hands of, the, of Kim Jong un and his evil nefarious. Ways. Yes. What like, color? What color will his hair be? Uh, I can't wait to see. I mean, you know, he is like Meta World Peace without the elbow to the neck. But you know what? Back in the 80s, Billy Joel going to play in Russia did more for relations between the two countries than any mm -hmm. politician or media journalist ever did. So. But if it had been a Michael Jordan, it might have had a different impact than it had been sort of a clown prince of basketball. I mean, I, I agree, but he's not really an ambassador of our culture as much. Uh, right, and North Korea is not really Russia. You know, <laughs> Russia had made a lot of progress by the time that happened. It's very true, but i got to be an optimist. It's a start, and he's bringing three Har uh, Harlem Globetrotters, and I understand the Washington Generals are going as their chauffeurs. <laughs> My panel stays with me after the break when we look at the one case in history when the NRA wasn't calling for more guns. <laughs>